Here you go. Thank you. Do you want some? How about you? I can't even see you. You're like a shadow right now. <laughs> Never mind. Good morning. Today we're starting things off with a new segment I'm going to be calling the Super Vlog, which is essentially a full day's vlog crammed into about two and a half minutes, and uh, it's a good time to be had. So we're gonna start with that, and then I'm going to move over to the Q&A, which uh, I'm gonna be answering some questions that I get asked on a daily basis every, oh, it smells so good, sorry, every single day on all my social media. So, so it's gonna be a great time, and uh, check out the sunburn I got yesterday. Look at my forehead. <laughs> I have something in the truck right now that I am the only person in Canada that has. I have the pre-production model of the new Canon C200. I'm actually leaning on the bag right now. So I'm just gonna hand it to him in a minute when he comes over to the truck. C200? Yeah. <laughs> Back again. Matt holds the world record for the youngest pilot to fly around the world solo, which is insane. Look how young he is. What? what? I can't even drive my car very well. Crazy. Hey Matt, you think you got enough shots yet? No, never. So small. Plenty of room in here. That's not half bad at all. All right, man, don't kill us. Thank you. It's appreciated. This here camera is way too big for the cockpit of that plane. Just saying. Mosquitoes ah. and mozzies are coming out in uh, full force, so we need to get back to the car, to get back to the plane, to get back to the city, to get back to his car, to get back to my truck, to get back home. That made perfect sense if you think about it, because that's how I got here. We are the last people here, like. All right, get us home, bro. I'm gonna try. One minute to spare. Woo -hoo. That's not cutting it close at all. And I'm done. I'm done. All right, welcome back to the Q&A today. I'm gonna answer a bunch of questions. I get asked stuff all the time across all my social media platforms. And I did one of these a few months back, but I've had so many new subscribers and new people join the channel. So thank you and welcome. And I figured I would uh, I would address some of these questions just to get the ball rolling. You guys can know a little bit more about me, dive a little deeper. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the super vlog. I think I'm gonna do those a little more often. Those are super fun, super fun. The super vlogs are super fun. Yeah, just cool to be able to cram like a whole day into two minutes and just make that like a, uh, make that a new thing on the channel every now and then maybe I'll just drop a super vlog in the middle of the most random thing you're not expecting so stay tuned for that I asked you guys on my Instagram account if you guys don't follow me the link is below I'll put it right here in the screen as well I post pictures daily stories like that and I take a lot of questions from that platform because it's a little bit easier so let's just get straight in Caden underscore Bush asks when did you first start grasping the meaning of photography and really getting into it um, that's a deep question. When did I really start getting into it? Let's start with that. Uh, I didn't do this in high school. I didn't actually like photography at all. I actually hated it in high school. I was just like, no interest. People were like, hey, you wanna, next year, do you wanna do photography and go into the dark? No. I don't, I just wanna go home. <laughs> so I never, never did it. Uh, I didn't go to school for it, didn't go to college for it. It was just all self-taught. Uh, I didn't start actually getting into it until my sister bought me a camera and you can kind of see it. And you can, you might be able to see it right, right there. That's the camera she bought me way back. And I started taking pictures and then I just got addicted. And you guys know how it is. It's like a snowball rolling downhill and you're just like, I can't stop. And here I am. So long story short, I started really getting into it when she bought me that camera. I've been using cameras and shooting videos and using video cameras my whole life as a kid. I've always been fascinated with it. So it's something that's always kind of 
been in the back of my head that I only really started to get serious about after I was given that camera and then I upgraded almost instantly and then continued to upgrade and I was like, I need to, I need to do this forever. I knew, so that's kind of how that whole thing happened. Iris Bonnet Photo asks, did you ever go through a time in your career where you felt like you were doing everything right but you weren't gaining any traction? Yeah, my whole life. <laughs> there was plenty of times I would start a new photo series or shoot a bunch of weddings and think like, oh, these shots are so good. And the clients wouldn't really be happy or I wouldn't get anywhere with the photo series I was doing or I'd get picked up for some local magazines and they put my photos on the cover and I was like, yes, but then no phone calls would really come from it and I would try to network and you would get discouraged and stuff like that. But the key is to just be relentless. Don't stop trying. Even if nothing's coming from all the work you're putting into it, it's happening in the background. It, it'll all manifest to something. All of that time and work is by no means wasted whatsoever. So just keep at it. Even if it's nothing's coming to fruition, you feel like all these efforts are just like for nothing, they're not. Absolutely they're not. They make you who you are. They make you better at what you do. You learn from every single thing that you do and you shoot and project that you work with and people that you meet. Just eventually just like, it'll just happen and you'll be like, oh, okay, wicked. Super happy I stuck with this. Alex, Alex, What's a fair place in the whole world or where would you want to go? I really want to go shoot Antelope Canyon. I've, I've been wanting to shoot Antelope Canyon since like 2004 when I saw a Peter Lick photo called the Ghost of Antelope Canyon and I was like, where is that? How do I get there? And when can I go? It's been like 13 years in the making that I've wanted to go shoot. I don't know if I'm gonna get there and it's gonna be like a huge letdown because I've wanted to shoot this place for 13 years. It'll probably only take me like three hours to shoot the whole thing because it's a slot canyon and the light is only good for like a certain amount of time. It's just like one of those shots that I need, I, I need my version in my own personal portfolio. So like, I really wanna go to Antelope Canyon. Ava McFarlane asks, what are you planning on buying next to expand your collection? Well, I just bought the DJI Spark, so I don't know if that counts. I wanna do a little fun review and fly it around my office and just see how that goes. So I just added that. And other than that, I bought the Phantom 4 Pro to take on a super epic trip that's happening at the end of this month that I still haven't told you guys about, but hoo -hoo, it's gonna be dope. Grant Anthony asks, how do you deal with comparing your work to others? How do you get motivation to carry on when there's so many photographers that are better than me? Let's start with this. There's always going to be someone that does what you do better. And to me, that's a good thing because I don't want to be the ultimate best at what I do. If I was the best photographer in the world, I was the best cinematographer, there was nobody, nobody better. It would be so boring. It would be so lonely. It'd be cool for like a day and then you'd be like, wow, like... Now what? Being not as good as other people lets you get a taste of what it is that you want to strive towards. It lets you think to yourself, wow, I wanna to get to that place and shoot photos like that. So how do I get there? Let's build a plan. Let's make the steps. Let's, let's get inspired on a daily basis because you're scrolling through Instagram and you're like, look at all these incredible photos. I need to be taking photos like this. So what are you gonna do about it? Go start taking photos like that. That's my approach to it. Like I'm super happy that I'm not the best at what I do and seeing better editors and seeing better vloggers and seeing better photographers just makes me love what I do even more because I just think to myself, man, there's so much room to grow forever and that's what I love. Aaron Bagel asks, what's your favorite type of coffee? Chemex, Aeropress, Espresso, V60, you name it. Dude, I like it all, man. I use a Chemex every single morning, which is pour over drip coffee. So that's probably my favorite, given the fact that I use it every single morning. Uh, if I had to pick like a second, definitely espresso, because you can do so many different things with espresso. You know, you can make lattes and cappuccinos, you can drink it straight and Americanos, and you can just like, there's so many great things you can do with espresso. And sometimes when you're just like dragging and you're just lagging days behind, you just boom, double shot. <laughs> Peace. Bree.png asks, do you support pineapple on pizza? This is an interesting thing. I didn't realize that so many people have like a strong feeling about this. And my answer is yes, I love pineapple. So you can put pineapple on whatever you want. I'm gonna eat it because it's delicious. I've even got a tattoo of a pineapple on my arm because I love it so much. So yeah, I'll put it on anything. Yes, please. Here's a question I get asked all the time. Literally every single day on every single platform that I contribute to, is what camera should I buy? And there's no easy answer to this because I don't know each individual person that's asking me this. If my mom asks me, what camera should I buy? That answer is gonna be completely different than if my friend Maddie that you guys saw today was like, what do you think I should get next for a camera? 
My answer would be completely different for him. If my dad asked me, if you asked me, the question changes all the time based on the individual. So the advice that I could give you, because I can't tell you what to buy. You guys know what I like. I like Canon cameras and I've always shot with Canon, but I'm not just gonna go tell you, go buy that because that might not be what's best for you. So it kind of comes down to like having to give you advice. And the advice that I give you is look around, really break down what it is that you want out of photography or out of video. Are you going to be a cinematographer? Is photo not as important to you or is it more important to you? Because just those two questions are gonna make a huge difference in what camera you buy. Because maybe that camera's way better for photos, that camera's way better for videos. So if your focus is video, you go with that one. If it's photos, you go with that one. If it's in between, that's a whole nother topic. Then you go for the camera that's like, pretty good with both. It's gonna sacrifice here, you're gonna sacrifice here, but you're gonna meet at a happy medium. So first, discover what it is that you wanna do. Once you've made that, you gotta lock down a budget. You can say, I only have this much to spend. So now that you know you only have a thousand bucks, you look at this one and you look at this one and you say, which one can I afford based on what my priorities are? And then you go from there. You gotta break it down into bite-sized steps. I would love to buy a red camera, but it's just like, it's not practical for me because I am equally a photographer as I am a cinematographer. So for me, lugging around a red camera is A, too heavy, doesn't let me flip back and forth the photos really fast if I wanna just start taking photos instantly. Yes, I want it, but it's not practical for my use, for my life, for my career, and what I do in this whole sphere of filmmaking and media and photography, it just doesn't work. But the 1DX for me is great at photos and it's great at video, and I can flip back and forth super fast without having to change the body of the camera and go through different, it's, I just carry one thing and it does what I love to do equally well on both sides. So that's kind of how I recommend choosing a camera. When it comes to brand, some people just like to use Windows, some people People like to use Apple, some people hate Apple, and some people just want an Android phone, and it, it kind of comes down to what you're comfortable with. Like, I love the menus in Canon. I find them super easy to use, where I look at a Sony camera, and I feel like I'm coding a new script to put into a rocket ship. So for me, that's something that just makes me more comfortable when I'm using a Canon camera. I like Zeiss lenses, so I want to use those. Then, then that would be a factor that would point you in a specific direction. So I can't just come out and say, oh, what camera should you buy? You should buy the 1DX Mark II. Have a great day. Because it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense for everybody. Find out what you want to do, pick the budget, narrow it down and put in the work and then go give it a shot, pun intended. I am Collier asks, how much coffee do you drink in a day? You know, that's funny. Uh, usually around like two cups, three on like a heavy day. I've done like four cups, but then I just start feeling like, I feel like I'm floating. I feel like I'm gonna walk outside and just start like hovering around. But sometimes I let on that I drink more coffee than I actually do. You guys see it in every episode. You see it in every vlog. So it appears that like this guy is always drinking coffee because every time you see me, I'm drinking it. But in real life, like if we're just hanging out during the day, like I drink it in the morning and then maybe I have like a, a second pick me up in the afternoon and then that's pretty much it. Zion Mustafa asks, what happened to your segment, stupid places to mount my GoPro? Ah. That's a great question. I need to do that more. I just like, I gotta be honest. I never use the GoPro. I want to use it and I want it to be something that like I bring everywhere with me and get like super creative, unique ideas. But like, I just, I never bring it. I don't know why. It's not that I don't like it. I just like, I just can't be bothered to bring it with me. Here's another question I get asked all the time. Will you switch to Sony? No. Alex Snaps says, I'd like to see a story time about your tattoos. Well, Alex, uh, I'll, uh, I'll link a video right here that I talked about some of my tattoos and that might, that might whet your appetite a little bit. But yeah, I need to do a little sit down and, and talk about all of these. Um, I have a lot. Ryan, what's his name? Ryan Bomarito asks, if you could work with anyone in the world for a collaboration, who would you work with? That's tough. There's a couple people, like I would love to go shooting with Peter Lick one day because I think that guy is an absolute beast. And if you've ever been into one of his galleries, his landscape photos are just like bonkers. They're just straight up ridiculous. And I love the fact that he still sells his prints and they're framed so beautifully and so much work goes into the presentation of them. And I've always wanted to own one of his massive pieces, but I just think like going out and shooting with him would be like an epic adventure. Someone else I think would be cool to collaborate with is, uh, I really think Tom DeLonge is, is a unique artist, the former guitarist of Blink-182. And I kind of like the fact that he just said like, nah, I don't want to do this anymore, given that it was a successful band. And he was just like, I would rather do other things. And I just think that's really, really cool. And I think it takes balls to be able to just drop something that is like world renowned and known by millions and millions of people to just go do something completely different and follow a passion that people think you're crazy about. And I have a respect for that. So, so I would love to collaborate with that guy one day. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but even just to high five the dude and be like, 
Yes. That'd be cool. Okay, guys, that is it for me for this episode. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys dug the super vlog. Hit that like button if you like this video. Smash it if you so desire, because like I've said before, I won't hold it against you. Stay tuned this week for more videos, more tutorials, more good stuff happening. Next week is gonna be crazy, so stay tuned for that. I am headed out. No, I'm staying in the country, but I'm going to the, I'm going to the other side of the country. Okay, yeah, so it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a fun week. So subscribe if you aren't already, and, and I will, as always, see you in the next episode.